Second, this story is from the Wall Street Journal, why an honors student wants to skip college and go to trade school. As worries about student debt rise, states and businesses increasingly push faster, cheaper paths to the workplace, and parents are stumped. This is about Ray Lee Nicholson. She earns A's in her honors class at a public high school south of Pittsburgh. She scored in the 88th percentile on her college boards, but instead of going to college, she wants to attend a two-year technical program that'll qualify to her qualify her to work as a diesel mechanic. Her guidance counselor, two teachers, and several other adults are telling her she's making a huge mistake. She says, my dentist told me to work on cars as a hobby, but she kept telling me with my potential I should really go to college. The friction around the best path forward after Haskell is popping up around the country as anxious students and families try to figure out how to pay for four years of college. At the same time, business groups and state governments make the case for a free or much cheaper vocational education. Now, this conversation, according to Wall Street Journal, being fueled by questions about the declining value of a college degree as well as the rising cost of tuition and the resulting student debt. Low unemployment and a strong job market are exacerbating an already growing skills gap, raising prospects for tradespeople like welders who are in high demand still. The decision to forego a four-year degree runs counter to 30 years of conventional wisdom. Well, in my case, it's longer than that. But, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing here. One of my big bugaboos, I mean, I, w- one of my chief gripes with the quote-unquote establishment, now define it this way, the establishment in their minds, are are our betters. And some of them have good intentions. Others are just, just plain out of touch and wrong, and they're arrogant and condescending. But some of them do have good intentions. But the people of this country have, for generations, largely entrusted this group of betters to run institutions like education to come up with a curricula to run the public school system and uh, certain community college and so forth and the premises associated with all this the reasons for doing it and they have crept into our culture and they have become rock solid in the culture and this this story illustrates got to go to college it's it's just it's what you do. It's There's no other consideration. You don't want to go to college. Look at your grades. You're 88th. Your college boards are up the, through the roof. You don't want to go. You're ostracized and you're made to look odd and weird and so forth. But look at what our betters have actually done to this. And this, this high school student, Renee Nichol, Rayleigh Nicholson, whether she knows it directly or instinctively, understands that it has become an albatross. Look at what our betters have done to the whole idea of a college education. They've made it unaffordable. What is the value in graduating from four years with debt that can run anywhere from 20000 to 150000 And the more you're in school, the higher the debt. And the more debt that a a graduate has, the less the value of the degree, the number of years it's going to take to repay the loans. And in this way, a college, a college education has, has been warped and they're in charge of all of it. They're in charge of the tuition. They're in charge of the loan programs. They've taken it over. The government runs all of this. And with grant money involved, the government has to say so in curricula. Look at all of the worthless degrees now that graduates have because they thought it was what they were interested in or meaningful, but it's not. And so they're unemployable and they have all of this debt. It used to not be this way, but when everybody starts talking about 
the things in life that are too expensive and that we've got to bring the cost down, nobody seriously ever talks about lowering tuition. The student loan program is there to prop up highly paid faculty and student assistants, teachers assistants, and so forth, because the faculty is the training ground and the proving ground for bending and shaping and molding these young skulls full of mush into good little cookie-cutter liberals. And so the professors, uh, faculty, and so forth that do this can't cut their salaries, we can't grade them on performance, we give them tenure and so forth, can't judge their capability, can't judge their worth, can't treat them according to their talents and abilities, we're saddled with them. The education system is propped up, and whether you're any good at it or not, your job is safe, and it has become basically a series of indoctrination centers. And yet parents still believe in it. It still remains a number one objective of every parent for their child to go to college, to get a degree. And don't misunderstand, I'm not universally opposed to this. Do not misunderstand me. I just, I think it's, it's something that's universally applied to everybody when it doesn't necessarily make sense for everybody. And yet people are pushed towards it. There's peer pressure. There's family pressure. There's all kinds of pressure applied. And plus, the, you're not going to ever amount to anything if you don't pressure. Now, as I say, I, I do, not, do not misunderstand. I'm not here criticizing the concept of education. I'm all for it, folks. I'm the biggest believer in education you'll ever run into. It is invaluable. It's irreplaceable. You cannot fake knowledge. You cannot fake the experience that life teaches you. You cannot go through life without a foundation of knowledge and an ability to think and add to it. So don't anybody confuse what I'm saying here. But I think that's not happening much anymore. The ability to think is being suppressed. Conformity is being pushed on everybody. Christina Hoff Summers, that name ring a bell for you, Mr. Snurdly. She's she's a she's a well known conservative. Uh, I don't know if we call her anti feminist. She would think she's a feminist, but she's anti left wing feminism. Well, she was invited to speak at some college in Portland, and the students panicked, and they considered what she was going to say to be the equivalent of a weapon threatening their safety. They tried to get her appearance canceled. That failed. So she shows up. She starts speaking, and they shout her down. They start calling her names, Nazi, bigot, this kind of stuff. She said she was able to get through about half of her speech, and then the dean interceded, and instead of admonishing the students said, I think it's time to wrap this up, and ushered everybody away. And it was just words. It was just words, and it was an alternative way of thinking and believing. And these students felt threatened by it. They felt like these words were the equivalent of a weapon and endangering them, and they were not going to put up with it, and they succeeded in shutting it down. Now, that's not education. That is, in fact, people paying to go to places that this happens are being ripped off every bit as much as you're being ripped off anywhere else you get ripped off. This is a giant scam to call that kind of thing education. This is not education that's happening in too many places. And then you pay for this? You come out of college brainwashed, propagandized, and you're unable to think? Because it's been, it's been trained out of you. Thinking, coming up with alternative viewpoints, opposite ways of looking at things is considered poison. You become a problem. 
that has to be dealt with. So, yeah, in a lot of cases, I see value in people who are able to think, who know what they want to do when they're 18, avoiding that experience. The thing that's wrong, the thing that's gone wrong is it, we have, as, as a culture and society, we are assuming, it's not, we're not we're doing more than assuming, we are basically judging and claiming that people who do not go to college are not educated and are not sophisticated, not acculturated, and not desirable. People who do go to college, who may come out of there brain dead, brainwashed, and literally trained to be just like every other robot graduating with them in their class, are considered to be the future. And I think we're beginning to see the ramifications of this kind of thing. It doesn't do anybody any good to graduate a bunch of robots that are afraid of words, that cannot think, that cannot even explain why they believe what they believe, other than to say, if you disagree, you're hateful and I hate you. But if you can't give anybody a substantive reason why you disagree with them, you just have to shut them up, shun them, or basically kick them out. You're not educated. And there certainly is nothing special about you. You have just become a tool. You become a lifelike robot of the American left. And so a student who is able to think and wants to learn and can get somewhere in life by avoiding that, fine with me. Because you can. Because that's not education. That's not we're, we're, people that come out of school like this, like these students that shut down Christina Hoff Summers, and by the way, they're not alone. That's just the latest example, the whole snowflake example. There's not a conservative in this country that can be invited to major college campus anywhere and survive it. By survive it, I mean give their speech. They'll be shut down. They'll be sent packing. That's not education happening at these places, but it's said to be. And look at the prison you're in when you graduate with all that student debt.